Hello everyone. Today we're adding options to my uh, my lathe. This is a 14 inch Rockwell lathe. And I decided I wanted to add a brake. So I've uh, been thinking about it and come up with different ideas. And long story short, the, my final idea was to actually use a brake caliper off of a motorcycle. And this is just like a generic one. But it is rated... I think it was 100, yeah, 150 cc's to 250 cc's. I tried to get the biggest one I could I could get. And it's a, it's one unit. I got it apart right now, but it come with it come with the master cylinder, the hose, and then the caliper. But I got it apart because I got to have it apart to put it in here because the the caliper will go in here. Whoops. Let me show you here. The caliper will go in here like this. And then the master cylinder is going to be outside of here, and it'll be actuated by a foot pedal. So I have to run the hose through. In order to get the hose through the hole, i got to take the hose off. But anyways, what I've done, in my case, I got lucky. I was going to add this to the front. I'm simply going to tap some holes in here and put it up here. But once I got looking at this, I realized it was a dual shaft motor. That had a cover on it, which I've since taken off, uh, which was right here. That's the cover was on it. And I simply just made a a disc brake, put a keyway in it, and uh, there's the keyway down at the bottom there, and then the keyway in the shaft somewhere, there it is. Slid it on there, and now I'm in the process of uh, figuring out what I need. So I got that made. I don't know if you can see it or not, I can't get it off there without pulling the motor off, but I put a hub on one side, and then of course the, the disc. Slid it on there. Now I'm in the process of lining everything up. And what I've done is this is what the brake's going to mount to. The brake, stay put for a second. Let's see, how does that go? It goes like that. Yeah. It goes like this. There we go. Bolts right up to there like that. Well, right like that. And then this will get mounted in there, which I'll show you that once I get it in there so you can see. Now you'll notice extra stuff on here. That was the first revision. I was going to mount this thing like... Uh, like this, and I cut that out to offset it a little bit to give me more more room. But then I realized that when I did that, the bleeder was facing straight down, which probably wouldn't have hurt. But I got thinking, I thought it would be, be, would be better to have the bleeder straight up because, of course, air is going to come, naturally come to the top, and it would be a lot easier to get the air out. The bleeder was on top. So I ended up not using this side and mounted it on this side. But anyways, see if I can kind of throw this together. I've been had it on there 15 times figuring things out. Uh, let's see this. This will be the, that's the bottom. This is the top. Yep, right like that. So that means that goes like that. And then this here goes like this. Like that. Yeah, this bolts on to here. All right, let me get this bolted up, and uh, I'll kind of stick it in there and show you. All right, so I got the bolts in. I went ahead and mocked it up for you. I can't get it in there like this, but I wanted to show you out, out here all together what I did. See how the brakes mounted on there. See, like I said, it was going to mount over here, but I decided to flip it, which doesn't hurt nothing. And what it'll do is it'll set back in here and be clamped down to this, like this. Got me? And I got three holes drilled there at the very end. 
and I'll mark where they go and I'll mill slots in this plate. So I gotta take this motor and this plate out of there. And that'll give me that'll give me adjustment like this and it'll also let me tilt it like this. But I'm gonna get it as close as I can to being perfect and then I'm gonna mark it and then I'll put my holes in. So let me uh, stop the camera and partially disassemble this and get it back in there where it actually sets so you can so you can see how it's gonna look. So that's what I got so far, and I have to, I've already marked the plate. You see the green, the green there, where it needs to go, but I think we want to remark it. I just uh, tweaked it a little bit. Mark it now, well, so I won't forget. I want to move it here. So now what I do is tear this plate out of there. Relay that thing out where it goes. Mark them holes. Drill the three holes. And then uh, mill me some slots. Give me a little adjustment. And then she will be done as far as in here. And then I'll just need to assemble it and tighten everything down. Put the belts back on and everything. Got that up on the workbench and I thought, hey, I got a motor over there. It's about the same size as the other one. I could mark it up for you so you could... Take a look and see what it would look like in the machine. Obviously, it's the wrong size shaft. It's three quarter inch shaft over there. But that's what it would look like. And what it would look like, the master cylinder will go like this. Yeah. And it'll mount somewhere probably in that area, maybe. I gotta figure that out yet. I gotta get all this in there first. But you notice how I'm twisting that line. That line is not really meant to be twisted like that, so that could cause me a problem. It's a stiff line, it's steel belted. So what I may have to do, if it causes me a problem, is uh, it naturally wants to be in this position. So I may have to make a port block up where this will go into the side and then another hole will come out the top for another line. It'll come over. But that's not a problem. I've already figured a solution out if it is a problem. So, got that taken care of. I guess I can pull, pull the rotor off and show you more of the mechanism. That's how it would look. So, that's that. And once I get this in there, I'll have to figure out how to mount this. And what this is for is this mounts to the toe kick area. Like right where my finger is on the inside here. There'll be one here and then another one over on the other side. And the shaft will run through. So when you step on your pedal, let me lay this up here so I can show you. There'll be a rod here that actually goes to the pedal. So that'll create a downward motion. And the on the opposite side, it'll create an upward motion. And since this here is going to be like this, I need to push this as a push one. Some of these is pull, so you got to watch what you get. Or at least you got to design it for pull or push. And so I'm going to design this to push up on this rod when you step on that. So there'll be something welded here and something welded here. The other one will go, I hope, on the inside. I don't know where this is going to fall. If it falls in front of this, I won't be able to do it. But my plan is to put another one of these on the inside and have this shaft protrude through and so when you work it it turns it in here and also runs another rod inside of here which is where my switch will be that uh, when the rod hits the switch it'll it'll kill the uh, coil it'll it'll kill the holding wire for the coil and drop the motor out so it shuts off and if you noticed, I think I mentioned the other video, but I'll go ahead and re-mention this. I got this slot in here, but I don't think I did mention that's actually a radius. I tried to guess what the length of this thing's going to be once I welded it on there, and I just roughly guessed two inches. So I just made a two-inch radius here. Because when this thing travels, it's not traveling straight up and down, it's traveling on an arc. But the reason I put this in there is so you would have, when it's connected to the master cylinder, you would have some travel before it actually engaged the master cylinder. So in other words, you'll, you'll be able to move this a little bit and it'll, it'll go ahead and shut the motor off before the brakes ever hit, which 
two advantages. One, you don't want to start hitting the brakes while the motor's still running. You want to kill the motor before the brakes ever engage. And two, is if you use the foot pedal like I do, is you want to be able to just touch the pedal a little bit and uh, have the power shut off without hitting the brakes so you're not wearing the brake down every time you're hitting the pedal. And that way you can use a pedal as another shutoff switch. Like if you're going to walk away, right away real quick, you know, usually you got your hands on the knobs. So in, instead of letting go of the knobs, reaching over and fumbling and trying to shut the uh, power off, you can just simply touch your foot and it'll kill it. And another reason, too, is the design flaw on this machine is that you can see where the switch is at. Well, if you ever get a bird's nest on your chuck here, you know, chips on it, you don't want to be reaching here shutting this thing off. You know, you have to come over here and sneak in and grab the switch while all these chips is flinging around. So, really, that switch should have been somewhere away from there. I don't know why they ever did that, but... But with the with the foot pedal too, it's another safety feature. If it gets a ball of chips, I can simply just stop it right there. And done. So, anyways, that's where we're at with that. So, all I have to do now is uh, put this back into the position that I drew here with the green marker, somewhere in that position. I'm going to drill three quarter inch holes here, 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 and here. Well, this might be a slot because it looks like to me it's right on the edge. But it's going to be a three-quarter slot. And the reason I'm going to do that, the three-quarter holes, is that'll give me lots of play. If I did slots, basically I'd only have play this way. But if I do holes, then I'll have play this way, I'll have play this way, and I'll have it this way. And it's easier to do, too. I could drill three holes in a little bit of no time versus milling three slots or four slots. So that's where we're at with this. So I will get all that back into there. Get it uh, belt back on the motor, everything on there, and get the, pretty much everything tightened down. Except for uh, this part. I'm going to leave this loose. It'll, be, it'll stay loose until I finally get the brake system bled and everything. Because what I want to do is I want to push down on the brake and let this thing turn where it wants to go. Because as soon as you hit the brake, it's going to snap in and square itself up. Hold the brake, then I'll draw these bolts down. In theory, I should straighten everything up. But, of course, once I get that, then it's a matter of getting some parts to make the pedal. I need to get a piece of diamond plate and a couple pieces of rod. I, well, the only thing I need to get is diamond plate. I got all spare material to do everything else. It's just the diamond plate I don't have, so I have to round me up a piece of that approximately 36, 38 inches or so. To go. I want to go the whole length. I could just make a foot pedal just like in one spot right here, but I like the full length one where you can be anywhere. You can simply step on it and stop it. So anyways, I'll continue this video uh, probably in another part. This is getting pretty long, so I'll just make this part one and sometime when I finish getting that in there, I'll post the other video. I might go ahead and just post this video. So anyways, thanks for watching and uh, hope this gives some people some ideas about how to put their brakes on their lathes.